So we'll go over some different types of drywall that you're going to encounter because it is a big family. Okay, And the standard stuff, white paper, like we said, just a layer of gypsum paste sandwiched between two pieces of paper. If you see something that says ultra light, light, extra light on it, buy that. Okay, um, This stuff gets really heavy. Uh, it gets hard moving it around, holding it up into place. Um, there are lifts and stuff you can get, but anything you can do to make this stuff lighter is a great idea. Okay? If you see Type X attached to the name, okay, Type X gypsum board, that means it has a higher fire rating. Okay? You want to use this stuff on the ceiling. You want to use this stuff on walls separating the house and the garage. Okay? Green board. This is a product that I, I think is kind of maybe falling out of favor a little bit, but this was the go-to for bathrooms, laundry rooms, um, areas of high humidity, okay, around the kitchen range, something like that. The paper is treated so that it resists moisture and mildew, okay? Come to find out that has also made the product more brittle, okay, and it can cause it to kind of fail spectacularly. So, so this is the problem. It will resist mold growth, but it's still not supposed to get wet, okay. So if you really have a problem and the stuff's getting splashed or there's wa water leaking on it or you really have some humidity problems that really need to be addressed with ventilation, this isn't going to solve the problem, okay? This is just going to break, all right? So um, they also have this purple board that I think is kind of the same thing, but um, I kind of stopped using this when I found out about this fiberglass face drywall, okay? Um, when, we, when we talk about mold, um, we'll talk about how Mold wants to eat wood products, okay, and it really appreciates the fact that we've taken a wood product and we've ground it down and turned it into paper, okay, into a highly digestible, readily accessible product like paper, okay. If you take out the paper, then there's a very, very small chance that you're going to have any sort of mold growth on your walls, okay? So the product is called Dense Armor, um, and it's got a yellow, I think the back is yellow and the face is white, but the faces, instead of paper, are fiberglass, okay? It's really, really nice stuff. There's no paper, therefore, in theory, no mold growth, okay? This stuff's required in, like, hospitals and stuff like that. Um, but I like using this in bathrooms, areas of high humidity. That being said, there's still no substitute for proper ventilation. Okay? If you're in a bathroom, you have to have a fan that's venting the air outside. Okay? So do this because it's a good idea, but also have a really nice fan that's going to suck all of that humid air out of those locations. All right? I want to talk about the tools that we're going to utilize when we're hanging drywall. And, and these are all very simple, inexpensive hand tools that we're going to use. Okay? We're going to cut the drywall to length and to width with a utility knife. Okay? No circular saw. Um, there, there are some power tools that we'll use, but for very specific purposes. So if we're cutting one to length, okay, we're going to get a T-square. It is a straight edge with a horizontal straight edge attached to it so that we can set this on top of the drywall and use this as either a guide for a knife or a guide to draw a straight line. Okay, So we can measure, mark the length of the drywall, set the T-square on the drywall, draw a pencil line, you score it with your knife, cut 
25 to 50% of the depth with the utility knife, and then you just break it, okay? You snap it and fold it back. Okay, you've cut through one paper face. You give it a little pop on the back with the back of your hand, and that'll break the rest of the gypsum, and you fold it back, and then you cut through that other paper face on the back, okay? and that's how you cut it. Don't get the skill saw out. You're gonna make this like tornado cloud of dust all over the place. You just score it, snap it, cut it again with the utility knife. That's how you cut it to length. Also to width. If you're trying to take a four foot sheet, rip it down to three foot, snap a chalk line at three feet on the sheet, score it with your utility knife, snap it, cut the back again. That's it, okay? This keyhole saw, we're going to use this for cutting, cutting squares out or circles out of a sheet. Okay, why would we want to do that? Cutting around a receptacle, cutting around a light box. Okay. There's a tool called the router that we'll get into in a minute that's kind of replaced this for the pros, but they usually still have a keyhole saw on hand. But what you can do with this is you can plunge into the sheet and saw it and then pull it out, plunge it again, saw it. So let's say you've got a receptacle on the wall that you're trying to cut around. I would measure over from one edge, mark the center of the receptacle, measure up from the floor, or maybe measure down from the ceiling, whatever you're trying to do, mark the center that way, trace out the size of the utility box, and plunge in with your keyhole saw, and you can cut out the shape of that receptacle, or you can cut out the circle with that keyhole saw, okay? This tool is called a rasp, or we call it the cheese grater. Um, you use this to clean up the edges of the drywall, okay? It'll oftentimes leave kind of a ragged cut, or maybe your cut got a little bit crooked as you were cutting it or something like that, you can see a little bit in your line. You can take this rasp and just shave down the edge of that drywall to get a nice, clean, straight, crisp edge. Okay. This is so. This is a RotoZip brand, but drywallers call this the router. Okay. Those of you in cabinet making or woodworking are going to say that doesn't look like any router I've ever seen. Okay. And yeah, it's certainly different but the principle is the same okay we've got these tiny little collets they're like quarter inch um maybe they're even smaller than that i can't remember the the diameter the diameter of the collet is different than the diameter of the bit that goes in it okay obviously but i think they call these quarter inch collets i can't remember but these are essentially the size of eighth inch drill bits and they've got these little, you can get different cutting heads, but they've got these little guide tips on them. And so what you do with this thing, we're hanging drywall, okay? I'm not cutting out the receptacles or the light boxes ahead of time. I'm marking them on the sheet. I'm marking center on the sheet. Okay, so let's say, let's say I'm putting up a sheet on the wall. I'm gonna have probably two receptacles on that wall and I'll have those centers marked out. Okay, maybe I've got a cable box on the wall. Maybe there's some other stuff going on. I'll just mark centers. I'll take that sheet. I'll screw it to the wall. Okay, I won't screw right next to where that receptacle is. But the sheet's on the wall. It's partially screwed off. Then I will take my router. And I will turn it on. And this bit will start spinning. And I'll just plunge the router into that receptacle box okay, where that center mark is marked. Before we did this, I've taken care to make sure that those wires are pushed back deep into the box. Okay? Hopefully the electricians thought of this also so that we don't slice through some wires. Okay? Make sure that this, the depth is set on this thing also. Okay? Plunge it in, Move the router over and you'll feel the edge of that box, okay? You, you have to pay attention, okay? If you're just, you know, dragging this thing around, you'll cut right through the box, but plunge into the drywall, move it over gently until it stops and you'll feel the edge of the box, 
pull the router out, go to the outside of the box. We know that the box is an eighth of an inch thick. Plunge it back into the drywall. Gently apply pressure against the box. And if you're just putting pressure against the box, you can pick that thing up and it'll cut around the drywall, okay? And you can drag it around the corners, you can feel the top, and then once you feel the side, you can go down. And so obviously this takes a little bit of practice, okay? The first time everybody does it, they plunge it in and they just keep going, okay? And then they stop and they realize, oh wait, this isn't a three foot tall electrical box, it's only four inches, okay? So you have to be thinking about the size of the box, you have to kind of get a feel for it. But when you're good at it, it's much, much cleaner than cutting it out with the keyhole saw, okay? It just follows the contours of the box, it cuts it out perfectly, okay? Same thing with lights on the ceiling. You'll just mark out the center of the box. You'll plunge that router in there, drag it over until you feel the edge of the box, jump outside of it, and just follow around that box with the router, okay? It cuts out these really nice, clean holes, and then, you know, the drywall's kind of compressed around that box, and as soon as you cut it out, you feel it push into place, okay? This is a collated screw gun that I find very nice for hanging drywall, okay? You buy these strips of drywall screws, and every time you push the gun against a surface, it will advance the screw, okay? So you can just hold the trigger and keep it spinning and just push it in, push it in, and it'll drive the screws in. These get tough in the corners, but in the field, in the middle of the wall, it's very nice using this. It's very fast.